Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters, and we're going to be talking about machine quilting ferns and leafy meanders as part of the Flora and Foliage Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along. And I'm so glad you're joining. Whether you're machine quilting or not, just hanging out with us, that's amazing. Um, so what I'm doing is kind of reviewing yesterday's video. Every week, I'll just kind of give a little bit more commentary about the tutorial, a little bit more information to hopefully um, give you everything you need to be successful with the designs. Before we jump into that, a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, congratulations, Lorraine Ledman. You won the weekly giveaway of the training wheels uh, for the wood grain quilting design. So I've already emailed her and she, she knows it's coming. And if you want to enter the weekly giveaway after the live chat's over, there's a link in the description box below. You can click on that and enter your information. This week's giveaway is for more fabric because we're quilters. That's what we love. And I'm giving away a pillow panel like this to one lucky winner. Um, the great thing about the pillow panels is that they're smaller. When I started the free motion challenge, I realized that some people were really nervous about quilting something a little bit bigger. So it's just a little bit smaller, a little more manageable if you're nervous about giving it a go. So um, one lucky winner will get that. So good luck. I'll announce the winner at the next live chat next Thursday. Um, also, everybody that has placed orders for the challenge kit and the products, great news. We got our fabric finally. We were back ordered, but it came in last night and we have been cut, cut, cutting. So all the orders that are waiting on it have either shipped or are getting ready to get picked up from the post office tomorrow morning. So if you're waiting, thank you so much for your patience. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's been hectic to say the least, but your fabric is on its way. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, your understanding on that. All right, so let's talk about this week's free motion challenge. I kind of threw a lot at you. I kind of feel bad about that now. Um, it was a great question because Barb made a great comment in the chat. She said, I don't know where to start. A little intimidated because there were so many designs. Well, this is kind of how my classes go in person. Maybe not quite so compact and extreme, but what I love to do is take one design and show different ways to use it and change it. Not only because it's fun to do, but also if you can kind of see the different tweaks you can make to a design, you can do that to any design. Plus, I know we all have different preferences and I wanna show you different designs that you might like based on your preferences that somebody else might not like. So hopefully by giving you a range, it gives you a better chance of finding a design that you like. And lastly, as we keep doing these challenges, this is my 10th one, I know that quilters are progressing in their skill levels. We have a lot of newer machine quilters and I love it. Guys, I love seeing the Facebook pictures. I love seeing the interaction on the chats. This has been so much fun for me. Um, it's almost as good as getting to see everybody in person. So I love, love, love the, the um, energy around this. So I want to have designs that can be easily manageable for newer quilters, but I also wanna add a little bit more for those of you that are um, a little bit more, I won't say experienced, you just, you have more mistakes under your belt than the rest of us, right? So try not to be intimidated, um, try not to be overwhelmed. It's just pick one you like and get started. And if you don't know where to start, then just start with the leafy meander, just do that. You can definitely just do that. So um, we've got a couple of pictures to show and I've got some things to talk through. So let me switch over to my show and tell so we can get going on that. So I have to tell you this week's video when it was all kind of rough cut and edited down was like 30 minutes. So there was a lot of content I was trying to get through and not everything could make it in there. So I'm thinking if you might be interested, I'll release an extended version of the uh, tutorial because I saved that extended version and it might be really helpful for some of you that want to see the, the quilting path a little bit more. So just know that is coming. Um, but we started with the leafy meander. If we're going to do a nature inspired challenge, we might as well learn a leafy design. And what I love about this kind of design is it's kind of pointy, it's kind of curvy, but it's great for masculine quilts. Sometimes it can be hard to find those designs that look good on those more manly quilts, um, especially if you're giving it to a gentleman that doesn't want feathers. So this is, this is kind of a great option for those kind of quilts. Plus, it's pretty quick to quilt. There isn't any traveling, so that's really nice. Um, there is a changing in direction as we hop between those echoes, but really it's, it's pretty quick. And what I love about it also is once you get the shape down, you're golden, you've got it. So hopefully you, um, if you've got a chance to practice, you practice that as well. 
a question was asked on one of the YouTube. It was like, show me a picture of the whole quilt. And I realized, oh, that was dumb. I should have posted, I should have included maybe like a backup version or, or a photo of it kind of from further back so you can see the top. So this is the top part of the quilt that we're working on. And we were filling in a lot of sections. Now you don't, if you're following along with me on the panel and you're quilting along, you don't have to do something different in each section. Okay, you can, you can combine all those sections and do a filler in all of them. You can do whatever you want. And I know sometimes you're like, if I knew what I wanted to do, I wouldn't need the challenge. Uh, but don't feel like you have to do everything that I do with all the designs. Again, I'm just having fun and trying to show some different options. But let's talk through them. So first, the leafy meander. Um, I also showed this in a previous free motion challenge. And I talked in that video how to change direction quickly. There's three different ways. Um, basically, you don't have to come all the way to the end of your leaf before you start another one. You can branch off at any point. Um, but the idea here is that we're just trying to go in a lot of different directions and fill in the area. Now in this particular sample, I want you to notice that my leaves are all kind of going in one direction. They're all kind of pointing the same way. Well, some, you know, some outliers aren't quite doing that. But in this particular uh, example, that can really help move your eye along an area. And we're actually gonna see that in a couple weeks when we talk about pebbles and we'll talk about combining them with other designs. But just know that you don't always have to go in all different directions. It's only if you want an all over texture. And I know I say that term a lot, all over texture. But what I mean is I don't want one part of the design to show up more than the other. I just wanna see the all over bit. Anytime you have that direction or that pattern, our brains are just attracted to it. They kind of jump to that pattern. And so we can use that to our advantage to draw attention to an area um, if we want to. I always joke that quilters are especially notorious for this. If you've been to a quilt show and you see a quilt and you're like, hold on, I gotta, fi I gotta find the block. Where is the block? Because um, sometimes you wanna see how it repeats. So our brains are attracted to that pattern. Sometimes we can use it, sometimes we don't. So this particular example, I was kind of quilting them all in one direction. Now this didn't necessarily make it into the video tutorial. Um, it's a little bonus. But here it's going a little bit more in different directions. It's kind of, you know, not all going in one way and that's gonna let us see again, that nice all over texture. What's tricky about this, I won't say tricky, I take that back, it's not tricky. What's a little different about this is we're filling in a defined area. So if you're doing this over a whole quilt, you're not gonna hit those corners like you are in this section, but that's good because if you can fill in this area and work through those irregular areas, you'll be masterful when you do it on a quilt, especially if it's all over. So being able to maneuver your way around and fit in and out of things is really gonna help you with this design. Um, again, I didn't do it to be mean, but it is a good learning lesson for you. The most important thing though is, is your, as you're going into those really pointed areas or areas that are really small, our natural tendency is going to be to try to make them smaller to fit in there. And that isn't horrible. I mean, if that happens, that's great. But just know that anytime we have a change in density, that's gonna draw our attention. So if I don't want the attention to be at the points of my leaf, I really wanna to try to keep that spacing the same. I really, really wanna to try to do that, um, if at all possible. But we know what's the most important thing. If you watch the video, I said it a bunch. I also edited it out even more, so it could have been more. But we just don't want any gaps in the quilting. If it's all filled in, your eyes just kind of see the whole thing and it doesn't zoom in on any uh, mistakes. I promise, I promise, and you should try it. And um, you can tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Uh, so as long as we fill in those gaps with anything, it could be another echo line, it could be um, part of a leaf, it could be Angela is awesome. Okay, probably not that, but I mean, if you wanted to quilt it in there, you could. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's filled in. And then bonus points, if it's the same spacing as the rest of it, and then it just kind of all blends in. But again, if you're just trying to quilt and not freak out, don't worry about that. Just echo your way around and, and get comfortable with the design. Okay, so in the expanded resources, I included a diagram here that shows the leafy meander in that section that we're working with. Um, again, getting comfortable with using echoing to come back and fill in any gaps and using traveling to get back out once you get stuck because you're probably gonna get stuck. I get stuck. Just use that traveling to scoot on right back out. As I quilt an area and move on, I wanna make sure that whole area is filled in before I progress on because I know myself, I'm gonna forget, and I don't want any gaps in the quilting. So um, that's why I'm handling it that way. 
Now there was a question in the chat before we started about the expanded di uh, handouts. The expanded diagrams that come with the videos, they're just a more in-depth thing, and so they, they're, they're $3.99 for those. They have the same info as the free ones, but it's expanded. You can definitely download the free ones too, but if you get the expanded version, you have everything that's in the free version as well. So just to put that out there. <clears throat> and then because I couldn't help it, I, tr I was like, don't do it, Angela, don't. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show the Paisley. Um, because it's a nice curvier option as, as opposed to the pointed leaf. So somebody asked, what's a great all over design for a baby quilt? Paisley would be perfect. It's nice and curvy. And what's great is you can spread out those lines to make it less dense. That was a question that has come through a lot um, in the last couple weeks. Like, if I don't want it quilted this dense, how, how do I do that? Well, you just kind of spread out the lines a little bit more. I have about a quarter of an inch, but you can go all the way up to an inch or probably more. You're just gonna have a lot bigger movements to it. Um, now, there was a question about this. I gotta find it real quick. Are the lines, Jill asked, are the lines on the Paisley supposed to touch? They can. Um, for the most part, that first one will. So when I make my first little teardrop, they're gonna join right here. But as I start echoing, they usually don't touch. And you can see in the sample that um, most of them aren't touching, but some of them are. I just know that I don't wanna cross over because that will draw attention to that. And I'm not gonna force that line to go all the way back. And I should have shown an example of what this looks like. Um, maybe I'll try to do that for the next uh, live chat. As soon as that foot, as soon as the foot of my machine hits a previously quilted line, I know it's time to turn around and go the other way. So if I'm paying attention and I'm on it, that means my lines will be about a quarter inch apart. But even if I you know, go a little bit closer, I'm still gonna keep it from running all the way into that line. So they can touch, they can't touch, it's up to you. It, it, whatever you do, just do it as consistently as possible. Um, and another thing I did mention in the video, but it's worth repeating, my, my paisleys tend to swoop around because I think they kind of curve into each other. And the thing about curvy lines is it's less noticeable if it's perfect. I mean, if I quilted a straight up and straight down, it would be a lot more noticeable if it wasn't perfectly straight. So I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving with that. But just like everything else we've learned, you know, we're filling in a defined area. And so now we're going to see, okay, maybe I don't want to make my paisleys really small. Maybe I want to just add a, one echo or do what I can to fill it in. The difference between these two pictures, I'm going to go back. So this is a sample that I quilted while I was filming. So I had that contrasting thread, that blossom pink color. And I do the contrasting thread so that you can see it in the video. But on the actual sample, using a blend, a thread color that blends in, like that pistachio color, is just gonna make that texture look beautiful. And you kind of see that spacing in between the lines and it just looks awesome. So using a matching thread color with these designs really does help, especially when you're wanting just that all over design. And again, it's kind of broken down just a little bit more of the diagrams, but you can see how I'm using echoing to fill in those gaps and maneuvering around. Again, if, if filling in a defined area like this seems a little tricky, then you can just make the area bigger or just skip a dip, try a different design. All right, the fern, there were so many questions about this. Okay, so in this particular example, instead of quilting those leaves so that they're going every direction, we are kind of lining them up like a fern. Um, and we're treating one part of that block as our spine. And I don't think, I don't think that's in the video, I think I edited that part out. But basically I'm picking a line and all my leaves are coming off of it. So since all those lines are coming in, that's gonna be the area that our eyes will be drawn to. So if I want it to be drawn to one side of the block or the other, this is gonna be how I'm gonna handle it. Um, but also echoing, echoing to make your space more manageable. Now I like echoing anyway, especially in this example, because it kind of just highlights that block or that shape a little bit more. Um, but if you're working on a smaller throated machine and, and you just don't have quite enough space, echoing is gonna just make that space a little bit more manageable. And they don't have to be perfect echo lines or just kind of adding those lines to, to create that that space that I can fill in. So here's another example, a little bit funkier leaves. I'm not sure what I was doing there. We'll call that a different variation um, of the fern. Um, but still, I have them all kind of radiating from that spine. The echoing is a little bit different. It's not around each leaf. It's just kind of pulling it out. But here's the question um, that came through. What's the difference between the fern and serpentine lines? What's, I mean, if we've done serpentine lines, what is the difference here? Well, the main difference is a serpentine line, they're usually pretty consistent in spacing. So you get more of that kind of a fern. They're obviously both ferns. But in this particular example, I'm making those, those leaves much bigger. And so now I have an unquilted area 
and that's kind of drawing attention to that. So it's, they are kind of similar in the way they go together, but it's a different spacing and, and a slightly different effect. So that would be my best example. But if you know how to do a serpentine line, then it's just first part of your leaf and you can just add the second part. So um, if that is too much, if that is too overwhelming or too much to think about, you can definitely just quilt the leafy meander in this section. Um, I just thought it was a kind, kind of a fun way to use that shape to really draw attention to an area of the quilt. And when I would do that, when I talk about that, I mean, I'm trying to draw attention to something that's my favorite, or I'm trying to draw attention away from something that's not. So if I'm quilting a quilt and I don't like this block up here because it wasn't pieced right or the fabric isn't great, that's not where I'm gonna do my most intricate quilting. It's gonna be down here to kind of draw attention away from it. So it's just kind of where you uh, hide it. But here's a diagram, it shows you a little bit takes the quilting, it kind of just shows you that there's that serpentine shape, but they're further apart uh, in between, and then the leaves themselves are kind of close together. Use echoing to fill in any gaps, because if you get those weird gaps, the shape is a little different, um, especially when you're filling in an irregular shape like that, that area that I'm filling in. Um, you can echo each leaf as you quilt it, or you can come back later and then echo around it. Doesn't matter. I like to just do it as I'm going. That way when I get to the end, I can move on but either way is good. So you can, you can definitely play around with that. The plume feather, as if I hadn't given you enough. I was like, oh, I don't know, this is so cute. It's similar, let's throw it in, since I had a video tutorial that, that covered it. But somebody did mention in the chat that it, the thing I linked to wasn't serpentine, so I'll go back and check that. Sorry, somebody in the chat mentioned that the video I linked to was not plume feather, um, so I'll go back and check that. But if you look at it, it's just the same thing as the fern, except I'm doing both sides. So that fern that I did on the flower, or that leaf area, it was one-sided, which is really nice, right? Because if I only feel comfortable going one way, that could just be the way I do it. We all, most of us, have a dominant side or a side that's easier to quilt than the other. Um, it's when we start trying to do both sides that sometimes it can be just a little trickier. So I thought I would throw this in there for those of you that wanted to try it out. Um, it's, it's a great one to work with, and there's that tutorial. And I, there's been lots of questions about that, so I'm going to show you a quick little video I filmed while I was quilting uh, this design, and we'll talk through it. So there's the diagrams that show you how it goes. Basically, you're starting at one point, you're going up and back, and then up and back. So how is this different than the fern that we saw before? Well, that fern is taking you on, right? I'm starting here and I'm ending at the top, whereas this design is bringing me back to where I started. The, the difference I would use, or the, the situations I would use each one, it just depends on where I need to go from there. So if I'm quilting this block and I need to end up on the other side, I'm not gonna do a, a plume feather, but if I need to quilt it and come back so I can move on, then I definitely would do the plume feather. Okay, so I know this isn't on the sewing machine. I'm sorry, I was trying to find it really quick, but let's just kind of look through this real quick. Um, let me mute it so it's not loud. Okay, so there's the spine. Basically what I'm doing is starting from one side. I'm quilting this curvy line that ends in a swirl. I'm leaving a little gap at the top so that I have room to add this little thing you'll see here in a second. Um, but that's gonna be my spine. And the reason I make it curvy is well, I already told you, I think it looks better. A curvy line, it's a little more forgiving. But then I come up to the point here. So I'm coming out of that swirl and I'm going right up to the point. So normally with a swirl, and we're gonna learn swirls, so don't worry. Um, normally the swirl, we would come back around, but this one we're just gonna kinda go up to a point. The reason is, this design is perfect for those pointy, narrow-ish, kind of weird shaped blocks, and it's really gonna extend up there and fill it. Now, I don't always have to do that. For instance, if I'm filling in something that's round at the top, I won't need that, but that's why I'm adding the point, is just to fill in that area. But once I get to the top, what I'm gonna do is now echo my way back down um, until I'm almost to the spine. So I'm just coming right back down, and then I'm trying to make that line or that kind of echo merge into the spine. So that's the trick to the serpentine line, or the plume feather. When it looks like it's going to merge into that spine, it just sets me up perfectly for the next one. And plus, I think it just kind of helps draw your eye down. It just, I think it just looks pretty. So as I'm coming in, I'm kind of looking ahead and I'm making it look like it's just gonna, like an on-ramp, it's just gonna join that. And then going back up the other way. Now the question would be, am I worried about touching that spine? Well, I mean, in theory, that's the idea. I would touch the spine, but I would rather stop short than to cross over. So, as I'm working my way back down, I'm just 
extending it out to the edge, wherever that edge is, if it's close or far, and then echoing it back in. I'm trying to make them somewhat the same size, and I'm gonna keep going until I get to the bottom. Now, once I get to the bottom, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I'm just gonna echo back up to the top and up to a point. Now I have that spine, and then I'm gonna start adding my ferns or my serpentine lines down the other side and really filling in that area. Again, I don't want any gaps. I wanna make sure it gets close. It's not necessarily running into the side, but it's getting pretty darn close so I don't have any gaps until I fill in that whole area. So it can be a little tricky um, trying to remember to merge and doing both sides, but it's definitely worth it if you um, practice it. It's definitely worth knowing. So I think you'll love it. There's a bug. Get away. So I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Okay, so moving on from the plume feather, how about those threaded leaves? Oh my gosh, okay, so this is, this is, I put this in for me because I love this technique. When you want to add that thread painted look, why? When I want that, like, just that really cool pop of texture, it's going to be an area of a quilt that I really want to show off. I mean, like, this is not for busier fabric. This is not for somebody that you don't love. It's definitely going to take longer because you're doing all that traveling and echoing, but that unquilted area in the center will just pop out and it's just really cool. And so we kind of talked about how to fill in your area there. Now what's great is you can make those leaves whatever size you want. It just depends on how big you want that pop of area to be. I mean, these are about a couple inches, I guess I would say, um, but it's just, it's just really fun uh, to do. Plus, if you don't like a line, you can just keep adding thread until it looks good and then move on. And then I thought, well, why not? I've already brought you guys this far. I've already shown so much. I might as well just throw another one on there. So I did a little bit of additional thread painting by adding another color inside. Okay, so what happens when you do this is the thread just kind of blends in with each other just a little bit. It just kind of gives, gives this really cool like color wash effect. Oh, it just looks so good. Obviously, I really like it. Um, but it's gonna take a little longer, so just be aware of that. Um, but if you want to experiment with your thread colors and see how they play together, it's really, really fun. Um, really, really fun. I'll show you just how much fun. But here's a little bit more um, in-depth picture of it. Lots and lots of quilting. There was a great question about thread buildup. Um, quilting gal, farmer gal, I can't remember who asked it now. Uh, but what about thread buildup in the bobbin? Sometimes you'll get, she says she'll get puckering um, where, that, where that's happening. Um, Sometimes, yeah, I mean, I'm using poly batting and it, it holds it fine. I, maybe it pulls in a little bit more, but not too much. I haven't really noticed that. But if your thread tension is a little tight, you might see that kind of happening. Um, but, and if that's happening, you can just not echo as many times. It just really kind of depends on what, what's going on um, with the thread color you're using and what you're going for. But I would say the quick answer is it shouldn't pucker up too much, um, but you can definitely loosen the tension up just a bit, just a bit. Bef you know, you don't want any pokies on the back, but you definitely don't want it so tight that it's drawing in because it can do that. So there's a great question. Um, the question was from Jennifer. She did some of this with purple variegated thread. Um, amazing. I think that sounds so great. And she's thinking of adding yellow. Is that overkill? And I'm going to say it's never overkill to add more thread. I'll show you how in just a second. But real quick, here's a diagram um, of some of those petals. Now, it doesn't matter the shape you quilt. You have to remember that. Don't, don't get too hung up on, oh, where do I go? Where's the shape? Just quilt the shape and then make sure it touches. Like you want it to come back at some point. You want that defined area because those touching will help you maneuver between them. And so that's kind of important. And then is the amount of times you echo, it just depends on how much you want the quilting to show up. If you're using a thread color that blends in a little bit more, you might not have to echo as much, but I was using that lighter kind of gray color and if I didn't echo it enough, it would just look a little sloppy. So you have to kind of play with that. But this is such a fun thing to do as like a whole cloth or as a um, small quilted piece. This is what I did with that technique. Um, I quilted up a piece of fabric. It's only about this big. Gave it to one of my dear friends and I went crazy. But now you can kind of see where that started, right? You can see like there's my shapes and I echoed it and I came back and added some more thread colors. Only difference is here is as I quilted, I changed thread. So like my first ones were blue and then I had like a lighter green and then that neon green and then I came back and added even more. So it's such a um, subjective process. I think that's fun. I don't mind starting something not knowing what it's gonna look like and you have to kind of be comfortable with that. 
just going until you think it looks good and then moving on or throwing more and if you don't like it, throwing more thread on top if you don't like it. Uh, there was a great question that was like, have you ever seen any thread color combos that didn't work out? Yeah, I can't remember them now, but there's been times where I'm like, oh, that's too dark or that's too light. You just throw more a different color thread on top of it and it really helps it kind of um, just blend in. So you can, you can really take this over the top. Not saying that you would want to, but if you did, it's a really fun technique. And again, there was a lot, a lot of um, thread on this quilt and it just made a really neat effect. I mean, I probably wouldn't do this over a big quilt because that would take forever, but definitely, definitely on a smaller one. So a lot of fun. Okay, for those of you uh, that's into the pictures, but I just wanna show this. If you downloaded the free quilting diagrams or you got the expanded resource, I did include on the last page a breakdown of which design I put where and what thread color I used because I know that some people want to see the guidelines or maybe you want to have suggestions. You don't have to follow that quilting placement. You don't have to do that. That just kind of gives you an idea of what I did because um, I know that there's a lot of pieces that look similar when you're zoomed in and maybe it's not quite sure where you, where you were, where I was. and so. I know that that could be helpful. All right, let me pull it back here. Um, and so hopefully, even though we did a lot of different designs, hopefully you're inspired and just pick a couple to try. Uh, don't, don't let it be intimidating. I don't, I don't wanna make it intimidating for you for sure. Um, in fact, it's so funny, the chat beforehand, uh, people were saying, I'm scared to start, I'm scared to start. I don't wanna mess up my panel. So it's crazy because I used to think it would be so fun to do a challenge where you had your own quilt tops and we quilted, but I don't think people would want to quilt on their quilt tops. So I'm like, oh, let's do a panel. That way they don't have to worry about, you know, messing it up. And now it's like, oh, I don't want to mess that up. If you're intimidated, just start with a fat quarter size piece of fabric and just go. Just jump in somewhere and then you'll, you'll, get, you'll get swimming pretty quickly. So try not to be intimidated. Just give it a go and I think you're going to have a blast. Um, let me make sure that there's no other questions. Anne did ask, could I show a video with slower speed so that she could see a little bit of where that path is? I will try to do that for you, Anne. Um, I will say I generally follow a rule. In the videos, the very first section where I'm talking is real speed, that's the actual speed. But then as we get towards the end, I'm just doing a little bit kind of like a montage that does speed up. The best thing I would suggest, if you're not a member of the Facebook, Free Motion Challenge Facebook group, um, definitely join that because that's where I kind of post those little tidbits and I'll, I'll try to post it on there and I'll try to remember to incorporate it in a live chat too for you and so I know that sometimes it's like I don't know where it's going um, that's great you can rewind it and watch it a couple times or back up and rewatch it a couple times um, I think that's all the questions I had uh, from just reading the chat and seeing what everybody was up to um, again, I'm so thrilled that everybody is, the people that are sharing pictures and encouraging each other. And I get on these live chats every Thursday. And if you log on to the, or log on, click on the link to the video, which is on my YouTube page. I'm gonna be adding some more. I, I need to add the rest of the weeks. But if you click on that and you join or start watching the video 30 minutes before we start, there's a little text chat going on. And so definitely chatting with everybody and answering quick questions there if, if it's a quick, uh, quick answer. And then if it's a great question or something that takes a little bit longer, then I just add it to my live chat. So I hope that you will join me there. And if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. That really does help other quilters find it. So when YouTube sees people giving it thumbs up, they think, oh, we should probably show other quilters how great this stuff is. So if you like it, definitely give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. All right, so next week, next Wednesday, we're gonna be back with another video. We're gonna do a feather or flower meanders. And we're gonna talk about echoing and changing up the design. So still more variations, but they're gonna be a lot more closely related than, than this video was. So hopefully you'll join me for that and then join me for another live chat next Thursday where we'll kind of break it all down and, and unpack it. So I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Have a great weekend and I will see you on Wednesday. Happy quilting.